So uh, James started the inspection, got all the cabinets open, we got uh, hot water, we do have gas, so uh, it's uh, ready to start. We got some documentation and then uh, Tyler just showed up. Hey! Yep, <laughs> there we go. So uh, the inspection's starting. This one was a really good one to train on. We all we got all kinds of fun stuff. So let's check this out first right here. So you can see uh, the what we call efflorescence right here, right? And then you have it's black coming around the wall, but you can get this on most properties. So you can see over there. But what really strikes the alarm is the efflorescence, and you can actually see the moisture line right here, and it is coming down and it kind of all settles in this area. I pronged the area behind, because there's these little holes up there, I pronged it and I got moisture in this area, but I didn't get any moisture over here. Before I keep moving on, uh, efflorescence, what that is, is moisture kind of wicking through the brick and it's leaving the sediment behind what's in the water. All right, so the next one, the reason why this is a really great training video, we got foundation movement too. And this foundation movement's a little iffy. It's, it's I'd still say it's within tolerance, but it's enough alarm signs that we need to call out a structural engineer because we have cracks through the slabs, door sticking, separation in the, in the expansion joints. We have separation on the, east side of the structure and on the west side of the structure. So we have it on both sides of the structures and we have cracks through the slabs on the same point, on the same sides. And uh, the, the floors are flat, but they use tile. And sometimes they'll even use a floor leveler and everything's freshly patched and painted. So we need a structural engineer to come out here and take a look at this and uh, give his final opinion on it. But it was, uh, let me show you all these signs real quick. So with this expansion joint, you can see how two of my fingers can fit in there really easy at the top. And as you come down, you can see it's shrinking down and then only one of my finger fits in the bottom. So it's smaller at the bottom and wider at the top. And this is showing you that the wall is starting to shift. Also here at the base, you have a crack through the slab. Some people might get nervous about this, but this is spalling. This, this is gonna be on some of your foundations. This is just water getting in behind the concrete and popping it off. We're actually more worried about the crack coming through the slab and the separation in the veneer. We're on the other side of the property and one of the next signs is you always see separation between the brick veneer and the windows, easy spot for foundation movement. So here you go. You can see that it's, it's wider at the top there here you can see it's wider at the top and as you come down come come down and it's it's flush with the brick so right there and then as i come down here you can see there's another crack to the through the slab too as well this one's a smaller crack so that's kind of iffy but but that being said you have signs on this side of the property and you have signs on that side of the property so this is some indicators here be like hey here's some red flags we also have floors on level inside, door sticking, so, and then we have a, a cracked window. So several things showing that this structure is moving beyond normal tolerances. And we need this structural engineer here to come out and give his final opinion. Next thing on this property, really big picture stuff. This is why it was really good for training, for the trainee to be here. You can see that there are some grading issues right here. It's, it's sloped, so we have a lot of water in this area and then as you walk here to right over here you have a lot of water pouring in this area so you can see how it's a lot of waters coming off the roof here coming down traveling down coming through this valley here landing here and causing a, a lot of erosion and that erosion there that erosion just allows water just to sit there and pool. And this could be one of the reasons for the foundation movement. So let's kind of recap that again. So you can see at the top here, water's coming down, all this water from the roof coming down, rolling down here, falling down here, and a lot of water's pooling in here. And I'd say this is one of the reasons why you're getting some structural movement on this property. Next thing is, is on this roof, I'm not gonna climb back up there today, but we did find several things, lifting, flashing, 
flashing, but the thing that actually sticks out the most, and some of you experienced inspectors probably already saw it, but you have, you have box vents, ridge vents, and soffit vents. You also have rid vent, ridge vents, let me see, let me get further back over here, sorry. You have ridge vents, turbines, and soffit vents. So the reason why you don't have box vents and ridge vents right next to each other, or turbines and, and uh, ridge vents right next to each other, I can't seem to point, is because what happens is you get a circular motion of air pulling at the top. So it just sits there at the top of the house and just sits there in circuit, the air ventilation just sits there at the top. Manufacturer states that, that you have one or the other. You either have ridge vents or box vents or box vents or ridge vents. You can't have both because you get that circular ventilation and won't pull ventilation from the soffit and allowing air to flow through the property, property properly. All right, uh, let's go inside. I can prove that to you that the roof is leaking with the FLIR cameras. And, uh, oh, one more thing outside, sorry. One more thing outside. Uh, so right here, this is pretty funny. The HVAC system didn't work at all. The heater didn't work, the condenser didn't work, but come on guys, if you're trying to repair it before the home inspector shows up, take your spare parts with you. <laughs> it's pretty funny the compressor's just sitting out here but um, let's go inside use the FLIR cameras show you all the roof leaks because it rained yesterday and why it's really important to use your FLIR how, use infrared technology on your home inspections okay so I have Tyler here he, we're gonna use uh, I got the, the FLIR E40 BX and he has the uh, FLIR C2 and we're gonna walk around and we're gonna scan the structure and we're gonna show you that um, show you that the FLIR C2 can find it, it just doesn't produce as clear of an image, but yeah, so we'll do that, <laughs> cool. So the, over here you can obviously see there's a water leak right here, but uh, upstairs is a little bit different story, but here's the E40BX, you can see it's, it's massive, you know, the water leak is real clear, easy to see, I don't really have it in focus right now, but you can see it's real clear, and then Tyler has the FLIR C2, and you can still see it picks it up. So I want to show you that, you know, just because it's a cheaper camera doesn't mean that it can't find what it needs to find. All right, we had uh, two other water leaks. We had one in the garage and two upstairs. Let's show you those two as well. So right here, you can't see it at all. We did have a little bit of moisture sitting right here when we flushed the toilet earlier, but you can't see any type of water stain. So here's the E40BX, you know, this is with it really in focus. You've got a water stain here. You can kind of see the water path running down the wall where it rests and the water path down to the base. And then here's the FLIR C2. So starting up high. Hold on, let it focus. There we go, starting up high, working our way down. You can't really see much. Then you have a little spot right there. So it does pick it up. And then is there anything at the base? Nothing at the base. So it does spot it, you just gotta know what you're looking for. Scanning in the ceiling here, no signs of water whatsoever. So here's the FLIR E40BX. So right, where'd it go, where'd it go? Right there. So we had a spot here. We did confirm this with the moisture meter test. And then uh, we had missing insulation, easy spot. So we'd had this spot and then let's see, and this is what it looks like on the FLIR C2. So there you go, still finds it. And let's turn around and come over here. Again, another spot over here, showing up right there. You got another spot right there. And yep, same thing, FLIR C2 catches it too as well. And then let's just do a continuous shot over here. This was an easy spot. You know, we had a little bit of a water stain. So you can see how large it is on the FLIR 40 EBS. And then right there, it still, still shows up too as well. Cool, nice. Okay, I know I went through that one really quick, but that was a really good training video for our trainee because I mean, it had everything. Furnace not working, AC not working. Good thing the temperature is like perfect outside right now. Uh, so we didn't sweat with the, out the HVAC working or the heater not working and freezing, whatever. But um, going in, we had moisture behind walls broken windows, grading issues, roof issues, 
fleer catches, just a little bit of everything. We caught roof leaks before we even used the fleer when we're in the attic space. So it was really showing them how the routine was important. You stick to the routine and it, you will eventually uncover the whole story of the property, which is really awesome. So I'm gonna head over to Sugar Land real quick, knock out those roof photos, and then go from the roof photos to back to Katie and help out Brendan with those the rest of the home inspection. Sorry I crash course this one, but I just, you know, I gotta, I gotta stick to my timeline.